Right. Do we have polls for you? I'm mm. talking about a slew of polls, a bevy mm. of polls, a cornucopia of polling this morning. Seriously, if you went to bed last night concerned there was not enough battleground polling, <laughs> like you woke up and it's a whole new world. Harry Enton is here to look at what it all means because it kind of tells a bit of a new story, Harry. And I want to start with Pennsylvania. I do. And you woke up. You had your dictionary on you when you went to bed last night. All right. So this is in the Keystone State in Pennsylvania. All these polls were released in the last 24 hours. And we see a lot more blue than right on your screen. So Quinnipiac yesterday, plus five in Pennsylvania for Kamala Harris. The New York Times this morning just out a four-point lead for Kamala Harris. Franklin and Marshall in Pennsylvania, a three-point margin, a little bit closer. And Maris came out at midnight, or 12.01, came out with a tie. I will also note the Washington Post had a one-point advantage for Kamala Harris. So the bottom line is there is a range of results in the Keystone State. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. But it leans, the leans in the Harris direction. Not one of these results, even within the margin of error, has Trump ahead. All right. Before we get to the leans with three L's, leans, let's talk about some of these other battleground states. Yeah, let's talk about Michigan and Wisconsin. All right. So Marist College, Quinnipiac University, all coming out again within the last 24 hours. Well, this is not such a hard slide to digest because the fact is they both found the same thing in both of the states. Maris and Quinnipiac in the state of Michigan finding Kamala Harris up by one. And then in Wisconsin, well within the margin of error, but a one point advantage in Wisconsin. So the bottom line is, at least in these two important states, these two pollsters find the same thing. Harry, what do you like to do when we get a whole lot of polling at once? What's the best way to understand it? Uh, what's the best way to understand it? Well, I could throw a bunch of numbers at you like I just did or we could average it all together. And all right, so this is Harris versus Trump in those Great Lake battleground states. We average it all together. This is all the September polling, not just the ones that I showed you. And what do we see? In Michigan, a four-point advantage for Kamala Harris. In Pennsylvania, a two-point advantage. Wisconsin, a two-point advantage. Again, pretty gosh darn close, but leaning in her direction. And John, you know me. What does this all mean for the electoral map? Well, in the race to 270 electoral votes, Keep in mind, Kamala Harris can win with just these northern battleground states, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. So if we lean all of those blue here, and even if we give Donald Trump, North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, Kamala Harris gets to exactly 270 electoral votes. And based upon the polling averages at this particular point, though it is close in those Great Lake battleground states, they do at this time lean a little bit more ha towards Harris's direction than Donald Trump's direction. Just to reiterate the polling right now, the trend line show this story where she's doing maybe a little better than she was with a clear path to 270. She has an absolutely clear path to 270. I would argue at this particular hour, this was the best polling for Kamala Harris, arguably of the entire campaign, because in the states that she needs to win, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, the average of the polls do in fact show her ahead. And she doesn't need to win any of those southern battleground states if she wins those northern battleground states to get to exactly 270 electoral All votes. All right. Explain that very well, Harry. Thank you. Thank you for getting up a little earlier. Than a little usual. bit earlier. Appreciate yeah, it. Right. All right. Your generation is killing it. I mean, honestly, you are one of the reasons that I am so optimistic and excited about the future of our country. Your generation, I mean, you guys, you're brilliant, you care, you are impatient in every incredible good way. You're not waiting for someone else to step up and lead. You are saying you're going to step up and get it done. And I mean, isn't that the spirit of our country that makes us strong? I. So I just, I thank you all. Um, you know, when I meet with young leaders across our country, it is clear to me that your generation with your unique lived experiences understand what is at stake for your future and for the future of our country. You know, your generation has only known the climate crisis. Um, we must tackle, obviously, the climate crisis with bold action and ambition to ensure that those who are here and have yet to come are going to inherit a livable planet. Your generation has witnessed the highest court in our land take away a fundamental right, the right to make decisions about your own body and not have your government tell you what to do. And you know that you will, right as of now, grow up with fewer rights than your mothers or grandmothers. And obviously, that's not right, and we need to do everything we can to restore 
reproductive freedom because of course people should be able to make decisions, women should be able to make decisions about their own body and not have their government tell them what to do. Your generation has grown up with active shooter drills from the very beginning of your education and you know more than most you understand the trauma associated with the epidemic of gun violence not to mention the tragedy of the loss associated with gun violence and Look, you know that you should be able to go to a concert or, or go to class without worrying about being shot. All this and more is at stake in this election. November 5th is just 48 days from now, and early voting is already starting in some states. So what we need to do, and what I know you are prepared to do, we need to knock on doors, we need to talk with folks who may be perfect strangers, but in their face, we see a neighbor. That's the spirit with which we do our work. We need to register voters. We need to text our friends and family members and classmates and remind them of how important they are and how important this election is. And it's gonna be hard work, but we like hard work. Hard work is good work. So let's get to it and energize and organize and mobilize. We all know that prices went up during the pandemic when the supply chains shut down and failed. But our supply chains have now improved and prices are still too high. A, lot, a loaf of bread cost 50% more today than it did before the pandemic. Ground beef is up almost 50%. Many of the big food companies are seeing their highest profits in two decades. And while many grocery chains pass along these savings, others still aren't. Look, I know most businesses are creating jobs, contributing to our economy, and playing by the rules. But some are not, and that's just not right. And we need to take action when that is the case. At, as Attorney General in California, I went after companies that illegally increased prices, including wholesalers that inflated the price of prescription medication, and companies that conspired with competitors to keep prices of electronics high. I won more than $1 billion for consumers. So believe me, as president, I will go after the bad actors. to pass the first ever federal ban on price gauging on food. My plan will include new penalties for opportunistic companies that exploit crises and break the rules. And we will support smaller food businesses that are trying to play by the rules and get ahead. So is that message working? Well, let's take a look at these new Quinnipiac polls, Charlie. Harris nor narrowly ahead in three crucial states, trimming Trump's lead on a couple of big issues in this election on the economy, which he's been up by double digits in some polls ahead of this. In Michigan there and in Pennsylvania, he's up only two points on immigration, save for Wisconsin. She's within the margin of error on that issue. What do you think that says about which message is resonating in states like yours? Well, I think what's happened with Donald Trump is people are getting a little bit tired of him right now. And uh, and I think he hurt himself on the border deal. When he blew up the border deal, he muddled the message on immigration. She gave, he gave Harris a, a great opportunity to say, I'm for more Border Patrol agents. I'm for fixing the asylum system. He opposed it. And so she's been able to reclaim a little bit of lost ground on that. So that's helpful. But in Pennsylvania, look, she's I think she's going to really overperform in the Philadelphia media market. Uh, and she's going to have to and, and she needs to. And I think women's health, uh, abortion rights will be a very big issue there. Post-Dobbs, you know, we haven't seen an election for president post-Dobbs. Uh, and even though 
Trump historically has performed better than the battle style, battle, battleground state polls have suggested. We don't know how it'll play out this time, but it seems like she has a slight advantage. I mean, he's talking a lot about the immigration issue through these conspiracy theories, Jonathan, related to Haitian migrants in Ohio. Do you think that's actually hurting him? Um, I think eventually it will for uh, for a few reasons. One, the Wall Street Journal today front page story about how this myth and this lie was known to him. His people told him and yet he's still doing it. The second thing is, um, you know, the stubbornness and the cruelty. I think is it's sort of a slow burn. When you have the Republican governor of the state, the Republican mayor of the city pleading with the, the nominee of their party to stop spreading this lie and he refuses and there are bomb threats and schools can't open because of this, I think people will take a step back to, to, to Charlie's point and think, you know what, I'm tired I'm I'm tired of this. I don't I don't know if I want to go through this. Now, there's the real issue is immigration, but we're not having the real conversation right. that needs to be had because of this. Right. It's almost a distraction from the real issue. And, and perhaps he doesn't want to talk about the issue because the numbers aren't reinforcing his message about the problem at the border with those border crossings going down. April, there's also some new polling on black voters specifically in swing states. And when you look at this, Harris, you can, as you would expect, see she leads 82 to 12. So, so folks, you can see it. Kamala has the momentum. And for the first time, there seems to be a growing consensus that while the race is close, she is winning. Even the Nate Silver types who have been, his model has given Trump a lot of the edge. I don't agree with how much it gave Trump, but it gave Trump a big edge, is now finally saying that Kamala really does have the more plausible path to 270, to an electoral college victory. And all of the other polls agree. Now, this doesn't mean you can just, you know, sit back and not vote and not donate and not share and not watch my videos and help spread the message. Because when you watch these, they go viral. And when they go viral, they'll help to convince people to vote for Kamala and against Donald Trump. But also, uh, you know, talking to your neighbors and your loved ones and getting them to the polls, making sure that your nieces and nephews have a ride to the poll on election day, all of that stuff. But it does say that what Kamala is doing is working. Her speeches, her rallies are a good combination of hope and frankly tapping into a righteous anger that progressive Americans have. And this is why Trump can't compete. Because for all of the pretend populism from Trump and Vance, they are fundamentally elite billionaire lovers. Uh, if, if Trump is a billionaire himself, he he may not be right now, but you know he certainly loves fellow billionaires if he is one, and he aspires to be a billionaire again. And Vance is in the pocket of every billionaire he's ever met. They won't criticize greedy corporations. Kamala will. You could see it. It's hope, but it's also righteous anger at the status quo and righteous anger at the fact that if we go back, it's going to get worse, right? We're not going back. And indeed, we're not just not going back. We're going to keep moving forward. And so Kamala is holding these giant enthusiastic rallies filled with young people. And that is the biggest terror to the GOP. Because it doesn't just mean they're in trouble in this election, it means they're in trouble in the next four or five elections.